The Sigma 14mm f1.4 Art is probably the best wide-angle astro lens ever built. Let's find out what it can do. So to test this lens out, I've come to uh, some woodland. It's got these beautiful, tall, big pines. And I'm gonna use them as my foreground interest. And hopefully we'll get a nice clear sky. It's almost clear at the moment. It's been clearing up for the last couple of hours. Still a bit of wispy cloud around, but I think if it clears up and we can find a really nice clearing in the woodland so that we've, we've got these trees kind of coming up into the, from the sort of the foreground into the, into the sky, it'll look amazing. So I'm just on the hunt now to find the perfect place. It's really important to get here in the light. Uh, as soon as it's dusk, it's really hard to, to find a good spot and get set up. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Okay, so I've found myself a, a clearing and I think the, the, the sort of the shape of the sky in between the, the, the trees is, is quite nice. So I think this will be a, a good spot, it's kind of what I'm after. Um, I've got my, got my trusty chair out. I always bring this along for Astro, although I didn't bring mozzie spray, which was a bit of an error because they're everywhere. If you shoot Astro, uh, if, you, if, you're a, if you're a night sky photographer, especially wide angles, you, you probably will be familiar with this lens. This is the Sigma 14mm f1.8. This was so popular because it's ultra wide angle and it has a very fast aperture and that 1.8 lens is a bit of a cult lens with astrophotographers but it has now been improved on with this the sigma 14 mil f 1.4 so it is two-thirds of a stop faster than the f 1.8 that means that it lets in around about 58 percent more light but that's not the only improvement. This lens also has a, an aperture ring. It's got the, um, the AF-MF switch. And there's another focus switch here called the um, MFL switch. And what that is, is, is a manual focus lock switch. The idea is when you've found infinity, which is sometimes quite difficult at night, especially when you're shooting wide angle, what you don't then want to do is knock your focus ring by accident and ruin it so once you find infinity you flick that on the internal focus of this lens will remain exactly as it was also on here there is an afl button that's customizable there is also one other switch which is this switch here which is the uh the lock switch you can uh, flick that lock switch and you can still move it between apertures but it won't go into auto on the bottom here there is a tripod foot and it's got a dovetail arca swiss notch in it which means that you can put it straight onto a tripod head without the need for a plate. This lens is supremely sharp. It's sharper than the f1.8 version, uh, even at f1.4. And um, one of the things that it does incredibly well is that it has very minimal sagittal coma flare. And what that is, is in the very corners of the image, stars can start to streak outwards, which is almost eliminated completely on this lens, which is brilliant. You'll notice that it's got a bulbous front element with a fixed petal hood on it, so you can't take the hood off. So what we've done is we've built a rear filter holder into this lens. Pop a filter in, never gets dirty, super light, easy to carry around, and then back on the camera it goes. And then the last thing I want to mention, it's a really, really nice bit of innovation by the Sigma lens design team. This area here, there's a flat bit, and then there's a little lip here, which is called the lens heater retainer. If you're using a heat strip like this one, where you just wrap it around the front of the lens and it just, it just heats up just a little bit, just to keep the end of the lens free from fog or misting. It's been designed so that the heat strip stays where it is. It's just something that kind of just helps the photographer out in the field. It's a pretty impressive bit of kit. The image quality is unbelievable. And what I want to do is just, uh, just wait till it gets dark. And then I'm going to take a couple of pictures and just show you what the results are like. Now I'm going to do two little tests. One is to show you what the difference is between f1.8 and f1.4 so you can see how much more light that f1.4 aperture is letting in and the second is just to show you how well this lens performs in the corners of the image because that is what separates a good astro lens from a, from a not so good one this is a lens that is optically absolutely unbelievable so i think we've probably got about an hour so i'm just gonna 
just gonna sit here and uh, get bitten for a bit and then uh, and take some shots. So it's getting darker, but not fast enough because I'm getting bitten to death. There are mozzies everywhere. And Chris is all right behind the camera. Look at this. I'll take a little video so you can see. Look at Chris. He's completely, he's completely covered. <laughs> Thinking about doing more uh, portrait photography, sort of indoor stuff. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up now. Um, the trees are well dark enough now that there's no detail in them at all. They're silhouetted against the sky. There's still a little bit of light in the sky, especially on the horizon, but um, it's dark enough now that I'm seeing a few stars come out, which is great. Um, I've got my composition kind of pretty much how I want it, I think. Um, so I've done a few test shots here and there just to find the best angle. So what I'm gonna do now is just wait. Um, I'll see more and more stars over the next, um, over the next hour or so. So. Um, uh, when I feel that the sky is about as good as it's going to get, I'll um, fire off a few shots. I've got a few bats, a few bats going over my head at the moment, which is which is nice as long as I don't get my shot. Um, so yeah, uh, I think actually it's going to be it's going to be a really nice it's going to be a really nice night. Very still. And by the way, the moon um, is set to to rise at midnight tonight. That's when it comes up and it and it's almost full. It's about I think eighty nine percent uh waning gibbous tonight so um so i need to kind of get get the business done before midnight really because then the sky will start to get start to get bright so uh yeah yeah good conditions okay so i'm ready to start shooting the sky is looking really nice uh i've just double checked that the focus is absolutely perfect on infinity <clears throat> and then i've used the manual focus lock switch to deactivate the focus ring so that i can put the heat strip on without changing the focus so it doesn't matter if i touch the focus ring and move it which is great um, so that's on ready to go um, all my settings are in place so i think i can start shooting now and the first thing i'm going to do is take a picture at 1.8 f1.8 and a picture at f1.4 just to show you the difference in the kind of the extra brightness that you get with that um, with that faster aperture so uh, so let's do those two shots Right, so here's the first image taken at f1.8. And here is the second image taken at f1.4. And you can see that there is quite a significant difference between the, the brightness of those two images, uh, the f1.4 being two thirds of a stop uh, wider and therefore letting in about 58% more light. And so if you're an astrophotographer and you're, uh, you want still stars, in other words, you don't want the stars to trail across the sky, it's really important that you're able to let as much light into the lens as possible in that limited exposure time that you've got before those stars trail. Now the second thing that I want to show you is just how well this lens performs optically. Um, when you have a very wide angle lens, an ultra wide angle like a 14mm, it's usually the corners of the frame that start to show problems if it's optically not a perfect lens. And I just want to show you how good this lens performs in that area, not only in terms of corner sharpness, but also in terms of the sagittal coma flare that I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, coma flare is where if you have a very, very bright point of light in, in the corner of the frame, it tends to, which is common in astrophotography, it tends to kind of flare out into a kind of a shape of a bird. And, um, and this it controls coma flare extremely well. So uh, I'm going to shoot at f1.4, and I'm going to make sure there's a, I can see there is some sky in my, in the corner of my frame there. So let's just take a shot. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of light on the horizon. We're not going to get rid of that because we're right in the middle of summer. So we're never going to get those really nice dark winter skies. But this is dark enough now that we can assess the optical performance of this lens and see what's happening with that star detail. So this was shot at f1.4 and the first thing we're going to do is punch right in and have a look at the stars right in the centre of the frame. And as you can see, 
They are very bright, sharp points of light. They're not smudging out anywhere. They are just as you would see them with the naked eye. But on an ultra wide angle lens used at a very wide aperture, where you really want to be looking is at the edges and particularly into the corners of the frame. So let's punch into that top left hand corner of the, of the image there where there's no trees. And the star detail there is, you know, they're reproduced pretty much as well as they are right in the center of the frame. Absolutely amazing. There's no smudging. There's no sign of any flare really. It's really really impressive to have a lens this wide angle at f1.4 to produce stars like that. So that is the Sigma uh, 14mm f1.4 DG DN Art for mirrorless cameras. For me that is the best uh, lens on the market for uh, astrophotography, for wide angle astrophotography. Having that combination of the ultra wide angle of view and the ultra wide aperture is just, it's just perfection. It's exactly what you need if you're shooting uh, wide angle nightscapes. Um, and all of those features just make it such a such a pro option. Um, it really is a superb bit of kit. So that's about it from me and I'm going to get out of here before I'm uh, eaten to death by mozzies, but I will uh, catch up with you soon. Cheers.